Well, what's going on guys it's your casual gamer and in this video i'm going to show you how to set up a super nintendo emulator called snes 9x so let's head on over to emulatorzone.com the link to this page is in the description below once you are here scroll to the bottom of the page and you will find your downloads you have a 64-bit and a 32-bit download i'm gonna download this first one the 64-bit also, if you don't already have 7-Zip installed on your PC, we will need this program to extract the emulator. The link to this page is in the description below. So here's the SNES 9X file on my desktop. Now if you have already downloaded 7-Zip, all you need to do is right click on it, go to show more options, go up to 7-Zip, and extract to SNES 9X. This will create you a new folder containing all of your extracted files. We no longer need the zip file, so we can go ahead and delete that. And let's open this folder. Inside, you will find your emulator right here. The first thing we're going to do is set up our controller. So let's go up to input and input configuration. The controller I am going to be using is a Nintendo Switch Pro controller. I have also tested an Xbox One and Xbox Series controller and those controllers will work as well. All you have to do is have a Bluetooth connection with your PC and this emulator will read that controller. To set your buttons up, you just click on the button you're ready to set up. We can start with the up button. When you click in the box, it's going to turn green and now I'm going to hit the up button on my Pro controller and it's gonna go right down the line. Now it wants to know what button you're gonna be using for left. I'm gonna hit left on my Pro Controller. Down, right, B, A, Y, X. Go ahead and finish your setup. If you also have a second controller connected to your PC, come up to Controller, hit the drop down arrow, and select Joypad 2, and repeat the same thing for your second controller. When you're done, come down to OK. Let's go back up to Input and customize hotkeys. So if you're not happy with the keyboard layout for your hotkeys, you can come here and change those around. Or if you have some unused buttons on your controller, you can map some of these hotkeys to your controller buttons. I would recommend giving fast forward and rewind a button on your controller if you have them available. When you're done here, hit OK. Now let's go up to video and display configuration. Now for the output method, Direct3D will work well, but I prefer to use Vulkan for the best performance. Now if you are having any issues in game, then you may want to come back and change it to OpenGL or Direct3D and see if that corrects your problem. Now you could check full screen, meaning every time you open SNES 9X, it will open in full screen, or you could check Full screen on ROM open, meaning every time you open up a game, the emulator will go full screen. Otherwise, it will stay small. I prefer just to leave full screen on ROM open and not when I first open the emulator. For the aspect ratio, by default, it's going to be at 8 to 7, and this is what that looks like. Now, if you want to change this to 4 to 3, this is what that looks like. So that is up to you. I'm going to change it back to 8 to 7. Now, I don't experience any screen tear with this emulator, but in case you are experiencing screen tear, then you want to check VSync. And if you want to see your frames you are getting in game, then you can click on show frame rate. Now, over here under output image processing, hit the drop down arrow. Now, all of these options will smooth out your graphics and textures, making your game look a lot smoother. Now, there are two that I prefer. I prefer simple four times. This is what that looks like. And I also like four times BRZ. And this is what that looks like. So I'm going to stick with this one four times BRZ. And for the high res, you want to go ahead and select the same thing four times BRZ. Now you don't have to select the same one that I'm selecting. I suggest go in there, play around with each one of those and find the one that you think looks the best. We are done here, okay. Now I'm going to load up a game in the emulator, but first I wanna show you what a compressed file looks like for Super Nintendo. So here I have Chrono Trigger in a compressed file format. Now we do not need to extract this file if I open it. Inside of this folder, you will see a SFC file. This file type is playable within the emulator. 
So if you don't want to leave it in that zip folder, you can simply drag this file wherever you would like and then delete the zip folder. And this file here is all you need. Now back over on the emulator, we're going to go up to file. Now before I hit load game, if you look right here, you'll see recent games. Once you start playing games in this emulator, you can access those games quickly by coming back to recent games and you will be able to see a list of all of the games you have played. But since this is my first time playing, I have to go to load game. Go ahead and locate wherever you have your Super Nintendo ROMs. In my case, I have them on an external hard drive and here are all my SFC files. And I'm gonna go ahead and select X-Men Mutant Apocalypse. You simply click on the game and the game will load up in full screen. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will catch you in the next one. Peace.